Welcome to another podcast of the current situation, Manchester United. You know, it's funny. It's funny when Manchester United signs one player. It's funny when you do something after a longevity of a drought, like something hasn't been working out for you. And then you succeed in one situation. And then after you succeed, then the successes come on and on. It's just like a domino effect. That's the way how Manchester United's transfer window has unveiled itself. Ever since we've signed Tyrell Malasia from uh, Freinord, yeah, Freinord in the Dutch League, we have signed another um, player in the name of Lissandro Martinez. Manchester United is building with this defender from Ajax, and now he's an official Manchester United player. Now, that's that's where we're going to question us: Who's going to be starting in the in the defense? Um, first of all, let me, I've not, as I've mentioned before, I've not seen Lissandro Martinez, not, not even, not only kick a ball, <laughs> but I haven't seen him play football at all. Like, I haven't seen him defend or transition in defending, defense into attack. I haven't seen him play, but going, I can tell, well, he's an Argentinian defender. And what I notice, because see, I don't know everything. Is me that may be shocking to some, but I can just tell that this guy has some spice in his defending, in his in his defending style. If you evaluate the defenders at Manchester United, there is not apart from Eric Bay, there is not another single defender apart from Eric Bay that has a spice in his game. Who is the last Argentinian defender that Manchester United signed that had spice in his game? Yes, he was a Manchester Red, and if you know Spanish, that's supposed to go to your mind right now. Marcos Rojo. When Marcos Rojo came to Manchester United, man, persons were saying, okay, this guy, okay, he has some spice in his game, but this we can't be starting this game, this guy with Eric Bay at the back. Red cars are going to flow like the river, so we cannot be starting both of them because both of them have the two this both both of them have the two the, Man, I can't even speak. I just came from a football match, so excuse me for that poor English. Both of them have the same defensive nature. So both of them are not complementary. They are the same. You need a defense that is complementary. Go back to Manchester United's legendary defense from 2007 to 2000, at least 12, of having Nemanja Vidic, if I see his name properly, and of course, Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand was not the same defender as we have, um, as um, yeah, as as Vidic. Let me just keep it short. Vidic was an animal from the rock stone ages. Rio Ferdinand was more of the the screener. He was the one that zone. He was the one that did the jockeying. Vidic would just go in head on, whether he get his head boss or his chi- his, his his chest guy to mark up. He would go into the tackle head on. Um, so that that made them a combi- a proper combination. With this, the thing with Manchester United was is that in previous seasons, given Eric Bay's injury record, we haven't had a defender that has been aggressive. We haven't had that defender that is smartly aggressive. Like he's just not a loose cannon, a a, a headless chicken that's just going for a tackle. He knows when to tackle. He knows when to be aggressive. And he's just an aggressive. Def- I mean, look at Tottenham. Tottenham has an aggressive defender in Romero, and he's Argentinian. So you could see there's a trend of Argentinian defenders. Look at Otamendi <laughs> at, at Manchester City, or when he was at Porto, or, 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 or I think he used to play for Benfica. But anyway, look, look, they had a sense of spice in their in 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 in, in, the, in their defensive style. They were not this docile. They're not like a let me just say, they're not like a, a, a Victor Lindelof that lose 50 They're going to win 50-50s. They're going to go into harsh tackle challenges. Isn't it? They're, 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 they're going to be very aggressive when attack, when defending. So, with keeping things short, the signing of Lissandra Martinez to Manchester United is a very good one. Considering that we don't have enough aggressive defenders apart from Eric Bay. Because we cannot trust Eric Bay, not even with five pennies. He, well, he's been he's been off to a good start. He played against Liverpool, and he played against uh, 
Melbourne, which he passed the ball to Marcus Rashford to lead to the goal, which was very good. So he's giving us He's giving us a sense of hope, but he's still capable of doing. But don't let this dude cancel dreams, man. Don't 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 be quick to buy this dude's dream, cause he'll just shatter them to pieces. Is it me? So just shred softly with him. Um. Seeing that we have Eric Bay and Lissandro and Varon and Victor Lindelof, Har Maguire, unfortunately, and Phil Jones and Axel Twan CB. There are a couple defenders that need to be sold and released. It's been said that Phil Jones has been linked to DC United. Yeah, in in in, in the MLS and and Wayne Rooney is now the manager for DC United. Yeah, man, hey Rooney, hey, to become more of a legend of Manchester United, bring this bring this Deadwood to America. Just just take him from Manchester United. Take him out for the financial books of Manchester United. He shouldn't be here. He shouldn't have been here like six or seven years ago, but. Make it official, make it official. Just take him to America because we, he's not needed at Manchester United, and he has he never he hasn't been needed at Manchester United since or since twenty sixteen or something. So just take him away, man. Just take him away. Um. So we've signed this defender for fifty seven million euros from Ajax. Now. Victor Lindelof, I'm seeing that Harry Maguire yeah. is unfortunately our captain and he's been confirmed to stay as our captain. Fingers crossed. Harry Maguire has to be team paired up with either Victor, not Victor Lindelof. He has to be paired up with Eric Bay or Alessandro Martinez. We cannot be starting two defenders that has the same nature. Victor Lindelof is not aggressive. He's not an ad aggressive defender. Hamagua is not aggressive and when he tries to be aggressive, he's unnecessarily aggressive. He fouls players just for fun. He doesn't know when to go back and when to I'm talking as if I'm a defender defender coach, right? But I'm just telling you what I see. He doesn't know when to go back or when to move forward. And if he moves forward, you know this nigga has the legs of a turkey, so he's not gonna come back quickly. So having Lissandro Martinez, I'm pretty sure, you know, he's he's South American, so I know that he's not slow. So he's going to add some uh, some pace and spiciness to the defense. So, yeah, that's what we need, man. Also, we can't be starting, going back to what I said, man, we can't be starting Eric Bay and Lissandro. That is too much. That's too much pepper in, 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 in your food. It, it can't, that's too much. You have to have a balance, man. So, seeing that we have seen and signed Tyre Mas Malasia, Eric, Eric, uh, Christian Erickson, and Lissandro Martinez, we still need a couple more defenders. And that's going to relate to, I want to finish this by the 11th minute. I want, I want to, uh, okay, so Manchester United is, been, is linked to Ivan Tony from Brentford. Now, uh, I haven't watched much games, but I haven't watched Brentford play in the Premier League or play at all apart from Manchester United playing against them. But I, I, I believe Ivan Tony is a decent striker. Um, they said that he's a 139 striker with the mindset of a lion. Talk about clickbaits, right? I thought this guy was like Kylian Mbappé or Haaland, but those guys, well, one is a president. One is an underboss of PSG and one another just moved to Man City. So, yeah, uh, Manchester United is being linked with Ivan Tony. Now, let's let's evaluate the strikers at Manchester United. Christian, Eric, uh, Christian, Eric, so Christian Ronaldo is on the verge or on the fringes of leaving Manchester United seeing that we haven't won qualifications for the Champions League. We haven't qualified for the Champions League. So, to for him... He's he's not his 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 status to stay at Manchester United is not written in stone. We have Anthony Martial. He's come back from um uh, from loan. He he has he hasn't done well at Sevilla. Um, we have Marcus Rashford. Rashford said he's ready. Let's see about that. Um, Sancho is not a striker, but he's a forward player, so he's in the mix as well. Um, he's looking to have a a a, a very good season, Jaden Sancho. Uh, Amazing Greenwood is out of the mix. Uh, 
well, Ahmad, I'm not going to put Ahmad Diallo in the mix. I'm talking about the pers- the players that are going to be starting much games for the upcoming season. Ivan, to- again, I haven't seen much of Ivan Tony, but just going on here, see, personal saying, you know, this guy is a good striker, but he's kind of similar to Martial. He's a good link up play, he's a good link up striker, and he can get goals. He got 12 league goals in Premier League last season. So I guess persons are seeing this as a reason to lure him to Manchester United. Um, I'll say this, man. If we're going to sign up Antoine, he should not be starting for Manchester United. Start Anthony Martial. Uh, start Anthony Martial as the striker because there is a player in him that needs to be revived. Anthony Martial is a sleeping giant. He didn't score those 22 goals a couple of seasons just just for spite or just for fluke. Yes, part of that season, you could say one of the reasons why he scored out of goals that season was because in the advent of COVID, when the stadiums were closed, they were not much fun, so there was not much pressure. My man was scoring bangers. He even got his first hat-trick. Yeah, but still, Marcel is still a good finisher, bro. Anything in the box and Marcel is there, he's going to score because he's like a bloodhound that sends weakness and he's going to pounce on it. He has the call, he has the, he, he, he has the, 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 the vision of a hitman. You know, Marcel 007, right? Um, For 0047, I thought I was thinking of James Bond. But seeing that we're linked to Ivan Tony. I wouldn't see if my nose had that transfer, but again, like I, like I said, I wouldn't start him as much. Um, man, I don't know what's up with Manchester. It's like we are having... Oh, I forgot Elanga. Um, Elanga won't be starting as much games. I, 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 can't, I can't see that from, from the start. He's not going to be starting as much games as last season. Nothing against him, but it's just... Tengok is looking to set... Is looking to 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 try compete at least cup, win a couple a uh, uh, couple trophies, man. I can't be, I can't talk. The Euro League, we can win the Euro League. Um, we can win FA Cup, you know, something like that. Just so kickstart his reign at Manchester United. Um, it's like there's a lot of Tony's at Manchester. It's like Manchester United. Manchester United are linked to Anthony. Manchester United is linked to Ivan Tony. We have Anthony Lango. We have Anthony Martial. That's four right there. So so when the manager, everything I'm saying, Tony, Tony, up so, up so, up so. Marcel and Ivan Tony, if they're if they're playing two strikers, and Anthony Langa and Anthony, the winger from Ajax is going to be like, oh him, him. So they won't get me, <laughs> they won't get mixed up. Well, okay, I need to wrap up. Um, so yeah, this is not a bad transfer window as as it seems. Oh. Comments below, man. Leave your comments below. I want to hear what you guys have to say about the linkage of Ivan Tony to Manchester United. Do you think Ivan Tony is going to cut the cake, make the cut for Manchester United? Do you think he's a Manchester United type of signing? Leave your comments down below. And also, seeing that you have signed Lissandro Martinez from Ajax, is this a guy that should be starting much games more than the other def- See, See, we have Varan, bro. Varan is a very good defender, you know. Varan is a very good defender. Victor Lindelof is a good defender on his day. I'm, let's not even put him away in this. Let's not. Let's not do that. Um. So yeah, even Varane, bro. Varane is not an aggressive defender. So we need someone to. Co- he's not slow either, but he's he's like a real Ferdinand type of defender. Varane. He's that a real Ferdinand type. He's a real Ferdinand type of defender. He's not. He's no Serge Ramos or Vidic, which is why Serge Ramos are, are very much complementary defensive um duo with Vron because Vron was not the aggressor of the two. Leave that for Sergio Ramos. Um so some person may say, well you're wrong bro because you know at, Man- at Real Madrid Pepe played with Sergio Ramos and Sergio both of them are aggressive. So what are you trying to say here? What are you trying to say here? You have a point but exceptions there's exceptions aside. This is not all the way by the book. It's not like all defenders that have, and even then, Pepe is a raw defender. This dude has no. This has. This dude is unhinged with with his defending. Now we have seen that at Real Madrid and even sometimes at Porto. But Sergio Ramos, he's more of the. He's not like this. That's a defender. Let's not get that twisted. But in that two with Pepe 
and Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos is more of the screener, but he's still aggressive himself. So he knows how to tame it down. It's not that it's not there. He knows to tame it down, given that Pepe is going to start with him. You see me? He, you can't have two. You can't. Mm -mm, that's too much sauce. They go get red card. And even when they even started, they get yellow card, they get red card. But that's a different discussion. Let's bring back this to Manchester United. So, our evaluation. What, who we need left at Manchester United? Now, we're linked to another striker that's going to replace Cristiano Ronaldo if he leaves in the name of Ivan, Ivan Tony. Um, like I said, I would like Ivan Tony to come to Manchester United, but I would want him to start at Manchester United. That's my opinion. Um... Who else? We're linked to Frankie De Jong still. Frankie De Jong is, is playing with Manchester United a bit. I, I don't know if Barcelona is trying to hold him as hostage. It's like they, 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 they just treat him like a dog and just like he has a leash and just tie him up on a goalpost and say, you're not leaving the training ground of Barcelona. I don't care what Manchester United is doing. You're not going to Manchester United. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey. Side note. Barcelona is looking to uh, be on top of the world. Like it's 2009, 2000, because they've signed a world class striker in the name of Robert Lewandowski. My opinion, although this is not a Barcelona channel, so I, wouldn't, I shouldn't be sniffing my nose in their business, but I mean, it's out there. So if it's out there, then it's fair game for me to be in your business. But, but hey, the way Bar Bar Barcelona, uh, the way Xavi wants Barcelona to play, I don't think Lewandowski is going to be the type of striker. He, I mean, he's going to score goals, but he's not the type of striker. I don't think, at least in my opinion, in my opinion, I don't think Lewandowski is the type of striker to suit the system of Xavi. That's just my opinion. Um, so let's bring this back to Manchester United as I close for the last time for me saying that. So we have signed Tyrell Malasia. Good signing. We have signed Christian Eriksen. Um, good signing. Our best midfielder on paper. And even even on the pitch, I'm pretty sure he's going to be our best midfielder. Um, like I mentioned, we need two more midfielders. We need two more midfielders to replace that of Pogba. Um, yeah. Um, and we have signed Lissandro Martinez from Ajax. So things are looking good. Everything is, is looking to prioritize the weaknesses as any manager would do with the squad they have, whether they just come into the squad or they had the squad before. They're looking to evaluate the weakness, the crack holes into the squad and try to uh, purge them or trying to prune them, cut them out with proper signings. If we sign, well, we sign him already. We sign Lissandro Martinez. So we have to at least sell Axel Twan CB and definitely Phil Jones. We have to sell, yeah, man, we have to sell at least two defenders, man. We cannot be having defenders as if this is the midfield. Of course, in the midfield, you need hmm. the United Sun is like funny. Um, so, yeah, we need to sell some of our defenders, man. I wouldn't say Luke Shaw. I mean, I mean most of you guys may not like Luke Shaw, but Luke Shaw is a very good defender, man. I'm going to just say it. Luke Shaw, a couple seasons ago, uh, well, I mean, the season before last season, he was good. Arguably the best left back in the in the league. Always remember that. Now, like and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down below in the comment section. Um, I believe we have a game against. Hold on, let me check. Crystal Palace. I believe we have a game against Crystal Palace on Tuesday. Yeah, on the nineteenth. Yeah, Chris... hey man. I'm checking our preseason matches and I'm I'm guessing we're in the Premier League or something because we have a, a few Premier League fixtures to play in the preseason. Why 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 is it why is it that we are doing this so early? Why is it why why is it that we have to play against Premier League clubs this early, man? That's gonna take out maybe it's just me, but that's just gonna take out the joy and emotion for a game that you're looking forward to in the Premier League. Don't be forced in the Premier League by playing against Premier League sides, man. I mean, that's just me. I'm just, just me. I know I'm a different cook in the jar, but... Oh, anyway, comments down below, and I'll show it to you guys in the next... Man, it's like I'm doing videos almost every day. Uh, I guess it comes with the territory, so I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. I'll, I'll do a video, a short video, a, pre, a preview of um, our games 
um, in the preseason and also a few latest Manchester United transfers, players coming in, players that are leaving. Yeah, comments down below and I'll show you guys in the next video podcast tomorrow. I'm out.